Hello, everybody. Welcome and thank you for joining me today for this TOEFL writing video series. Today, I'm going to take you through a first introduction video, and this is going to give you an overview of the independent writing task two. So that is what we're going to focus on today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this task. We will go over the various question types and the different types of essays you'll have to write for this task as well as the scoring. So with this video, you'll have a comprehensive look at what you may be faced with on test day. And I am sure that after this video, you'll feel much more confident and prepared to take the exam and confront these question types and really be confident in planning and writing task two. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And let's talk about some of the specifics that you should know when it comes to independent writing task two. As you should know, it's going to be your second writing question in the writing section. And so you're going to have 30 minutes to respond. And I have a respond here because I'm thinking of the planning stage, the writing stage, and also the revision stage. So you've got 30 minutes for the whole entire package. And your topics are related to education, work, or really anything in modern society. And for a quantity of words, you want to have at least a minimum of 300 words. That should be the minimum you strive for. And this is what TOEFL states as an effective answer. So at least 300 words. You don't want to go over 400. In that case, you're probably writing too much. But just make sure you're at your marker of 300 words. Now for scoring, there are four basic criteria that the examiner will look for when evaluating your essay. The first one is going to be how well you address the topic. So you have to make sure that you are addressing the topic in your prompt and that you are explaining the topic at hand. Then you want to focus on how well you develop and support your ideas. Now this will come in the planning stage when we develop our argument and really reflect on the question and understand what we want to say. Then you want to make sure you are organizing the essay and connecting your ideas. This is very important. And this is why a planning stage and an outline stage can actually help you. And lastly, it's going to look at how well you use the English language. So this includes grammar, vocabulary, writing conventions, any phrasal verbs, collocations. So this is just very important. You want to make sure you have a great hold on the English language, and that is quite broad. So make sure you're practicing your vocabulary and your grammar. And of course, all of this will be scored from zero to five, five being the best. You can get a zero. It is possible to get a zero on this essay. Basically, an essay at this level would pretty much copy words from the topic, or perhaps you're not even writing about the topic at hand. Maybe it's not connected whatsoever, or it, maybe it's written in a language other than English. Five, on the other hand, you know, really effectively addresses the topic. It's well organized. It shows unity and progression, and it shows a great hold of the English language. Okay, now I'm going to go through all of the different question types that you will likely see in your writing prompts. And I'm going to start off with the three choice question. Now, what this is, is basically just one question that asks you to choose one out of three options. And it's usually going to ask you what is the most of something, perhaps the most beneficial of something or the most important factor of something, or the best of something. So think of your superlatives here. You're going to have to pick one out of three, and that's why the superlative in this case will apply. Let's look at an example. We see here, which of the following activities do you think will be the most beneficial to the environment? One, commute by biking or walking. Two, recycling. Or three, eating a vegan diet. Now, I want to make it clear, there obviously is not one correct answer here that you need to choose. You just need to decide which of the three is the most beneficial in your opinion, and also which one of the three is the most beneficial to write about. So this will require some practice and understanding how to really maximize your time with this essay. 
a lot of students get a little bit confused with this because they feel like they have a lot of options and it's difficult to choose in the moment. But in our video for this specific question, we'll talk about ways to maximize your time and how to pick the easiest option for you to write about. Next up, we have the agree disagree question. Here you will read a statement of opinion and you're going to answer whether or not you agree or disagree with the statement. And you're going to have to provide specific reasons and examples to support your position. Now, as an example here, we have the question, do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Children nowadays have too much freedom. Use specific reasons to support your answer. I would suggest arguing for what is easiest for you. So even if you do agree that children nowadays have too much freedom, but it's easier for you to write an argument for disagreeing with this, definitely do what is easiest for you because again, you want to maximize on your time. Again, the video for this question will have specific tips on this matter. Next up, we have the preference question. Here, you need to choose between two options and decide which option you prefer. And here as well, you're also going to have to provide specific reasons and examples to explain why you prefer the option you chose. This fact here will be quite prevalent in the question, so make sure you're able to call upon reasons and examples. As an example question, we see here, some people spend their entire lives in one place. Others move a number of times throughout their lives looking for a better job, house, community, or even climate. Which do you prefer, staying in one place or moving in search of another place? Again, use reasons and specific examples to support your opinion. Now with the preference question, it's nice because you have two separate ideas here and you have it really spelled out for you. So you have the first choice right here and then the second choice in the next sentence. It's very nice, you'll just have to pick one, again, that is easiest for you to argue. Next up, we have the description and explanation question. Here, we have to describe a certain type of person, especially their good qualities, or you may have to explain something in the world. This is very broad, but it could be really anything. Or you can explain why something is significant or important. And then another option again with this question is the reasons for or the effects of something. This is usually the least favorite of students because it's quite broad. And so you have to prepare for many different variations of this question. And you may have to choose something yourself or you may be given something specific. So again, this is just another reason why this specific question is sort of a grab bag of sorts. You don't really know what you're going to get. Let me give you two examples here for questions. First off, describe a fear you had to overcome. How did you overcome it? So in this case, you get to decide the fear. You have a lot of freedom in your answer here. Although you are limited to a fear, you can really think of anything. It could be arachnophobia, it could be fear of swimming, fear of flying. So in this case, you have a lot of freedom. A lot of students might think that this is more difficult because they have to really think up the answer. In another case, you may have something that is more specific. So for example, how do movies and television influence people's behavior? give reasons and examples to support your answer. This is much more limiting where you know you have to talk about movies and television and how they influence behavior. It's very specific. Some students find this a bit easier because they do not have to spend time thinking of ideas and then developing them. So again, we will talk all about this in the description explanation video. This question type does tend to be a little bit more difficult for students. Next up, we've got the if imaginary question. Here, you're going to be looking at a hypothetical or imagined situation. And so you might have questions like, what would you do? Or what would you choose among a couple of options? Now in this case, there are typically no limits when it comes to choice as long as it fits the situation. I'll give you an example. We see here, if you were asked to send one thing representing your country 
to an international exhibition, what would you choose and why? Use specific reasons and details to explain your choice. Now, in this case, you really have the freedom to choose anything. So again, you have to put your thinking cap on, brainstorm a bit, and decide what is the one thing you could send. Always remember here, you're going to want to pay attention to your conditionals, your first, second, and third conditionals, which will also make a difference and have an impact on your scoring. So far, we've looked at almost all of the question types, but for everything we've looked at up to this point, I want to just pause here and talk about the outline that you should use. We still have two more question types to get to, but those require a different outline. So let's take a look at this specific outline here. This is what you're going to want to use for all of the question types I've just shown you. And for your outline and for your essay, you want to have an introductory paragraph, of course, and that is going to provide background information about the essay topic, and you're going to have to write a strong thesis statement. This is basically what you are arguing, and we will get into all of these details in the individual question type videos. Then you're going to have three paragraphs, A, B, and C. You'll have to include a transition word, or a phrase at the beginning, like first off, firstly, secondly, etc. You're going to have to write a topic sentence for each paragraph and then include your supporting sentences that are your specific reasons and your examples, things that you are arguing. And then lastly, your fifth paragraph, of course, is going to be your conclusion paragraph. Here, you're going to need a transition phrase again. I have some examples here to sum up, in summary, in conclusion. To conclude, then you're going to include a restatement of the thesis statement from your introduction and then provide a brief summary of your main ideas. Again, we'll talk more about this in the individual videos, but this is a nice overview, a very foolproof outline. Now we're going to go through the last two question types, which actually do have a different outline. So let's go ahead and look at the compare and contrast question here. Quite simply, you're going to compare and contrast two subjects in different aspects. I'll give you an example. But also make note that you're probably going to have to add a position or an opinion, but only if the prompt explicitly asks you to do so. I'll give you an example here. It says, some people trust their first impressions about a person's character because they believe these judgments are generally correct. Other people do not judge a person's character quickly because they believe first impressions are often wrong. So you see there are two different aspects here. And then your task is to compare these two attitudes. Which attitude do you agree with? Support your choice with specific examples. And now a great way to do this is, of course, an outline. But notice how this outline is different than the previous outline I just showed you. Of course, you're still going to have an introduction and you're going to give an overview of the comparison and your personal opinion. Your body paragraph one is going to compare and contrast both of the subjects and then your body paragraph two is going to compare and contrast the other aspect. And then of course, your conclusion is going to give a summary of your comparisons and restate your personal opinion. So in this case, for this specific question type, you would only need four paragraphs. Of course, your paragraphs are going to be a bit longer because you still need to have that minimum word count of 300 words. Lastly, we have the advantage and disadvantage question. This is quite similar to the compare and contrast question, but it is different. In this case, you are just comparing the advantage and disadvantage of one subject. This is the biggest difference here. If you need to, add your position or your opinion if the writing prompt asks you to do so. Let's look at an example. It says, some young children spend a great amount of their time practicing sports. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this. Use specific reasons and examples to support your answer. And so, of course, we're going to have a slightly different outline for this specific question type. The Outline is still four paragraphs long, so the same idea applies of keeping the paragraphs a bit longer since you still have to meet your 300 word minimum. 
The introduction is going to give an overview of the advantages and disadvantages and then provide a personal opinion if needed. In the example prompt, you did not have to add in your personal opinion, so keep note of that. Body paragraph one is going to discuss the advantage. Body paragraph two will discuss the disadvantage. It is really that simple. And then the conclusion, again, is just going to summarize the advantage and the disadvantage. Include a reinstatement of your personal opinion again, only if needed. So we do have three different outlines that are foolproof, great to use, and I would encourage you to look at our specific individual videos and really prepare for these specific questions. All right, thanks for joining me today for this TOEFL introduction. We're going to wrap up right now with some do's and don'ts. For things that you want to do and keep in mind when it comes to the independent writing task two, is first off, make sure you analyze your writing prompt. And what I mean by that is make sure you know which type of essay you have to write, if it's an if imaginary or if it's a preference, and also understand whether or not you have to include your personal opinion. This will make a difference in your word count and also your planning. Always keep the scoring in mind. Remember those things that we looked at and keep that in mind when you're writing. You do want to organize your outline and you want to write at least 300 words. This is the recommended word count for an effective essay. For things that you don't want to do, don't start writing the essay immediately without your planning stage. Planning can really save you and really help your essay shine. And don't confuse the question types, especially when it comes to advantage, disadvantage, and compare contrast. And that's where the planning and your practice will really help you. And of course, don't use any complicated outlines. I would really stick to what we have recommended, the simple five or four paragraph structure. You don't want to try anything experimental or creative. You really want to stick to the basics here and make sure you've got your fundamentals and your organization as perfect as you can. All right, thanks again for joining me. I hope you will continue and check out our individual videos for these specific essays. And then you should also visit us at www.bestmytest.com slash TOEFL. There we've got a lot of great practice tests and tips and tricks and really just great preparation for this exam. So we'll see you over there and I'll see you for the next lesson. Thanks, have a great day.